Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. On this channel you'll be seeing some of this. Happy old pen there. Some of this. I'm going to class it as gold. And some of this. It looks silver there. Apologies for the amount of nonsense in this video. Normal service will be resumed next week when I get a little bit more time. But in the meantime, I can only apologize for this one. Now, although it's been beautiful weather here throughout the whole of the UK for weeks, I haven't been able to do much detecting due to my work commitments. So, that should be slackening off in the next couple of weeks and I'm hoping to get out and do more detecting. And anybody who liked my last video where I was up and down the river, climbing up waterfalls and so on, will probably like this video. I find some interesting stuff. So have a watch, see what you think and thanks for watching. Well, another woodland adventure. This is a more recent woodland, this one. It's probably only been here between 40 and 60 years, judging by the size of the trees. Further up the valley, there was a bit of mining activity happened. There was a lot of drift mines, just little ones, went into the bank side in three or four places that I know of. So I've come up here to try and find some traces of that. Between the road where I got dropped off and here, I've had one dig and I've found a ring from a racing pigeon. Nothing spectacular. But here, on the path, that's something that you would have around your arm when you were in hospital. And this is just the sort of place where you'd expect to find an escaped lunatic. So I'm really looking forward to finding traces of that. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Now you'll notice this strap around me here. I'm not carrying a rifle because I haven't got permission to shoot in this wood. This is actually a, a bag from King Digger. Got a little bit of bait in there. Got me drink. I've got a striker to light a fire should I get stranded somewhere. What else have I got? Can't remember. And there's a few things in there. Nice bag, goes across here. Also has a, a belt to secure it around your waist. So I've got the pro pointer on there as well. Really looking forward to this hunt because I honestly don't know what I'm gonna find. I've got the Deus with an 11 inch coil uh, and as I say I honestly don't know what I'm going to find I may find absolutely nothing at all I did come up here once with the e-track and I found a nice cap badge from the Royal Fusiliers and maybe one or two old pennies and that was it it's a decent signal, reading 81 both ways Looks like a squashed old button or possibly like a rivet thing from the top of a berry or something. Maybe, I don't know. Ain't no coin. A nice signal here reading between 80 and 85. Well, I don't know what that is. Something metallic, given a good signal, not silver, and it's broken. So, not only do I not know what it is, I don't really care what it is. <laughs> it's, looking at it, it's nothing spectacular. Oh, hello there. This is reading high 80s. Oh, I thought it was a coin at first. It's actually a little... Well, I don't know what it is. It's something to go over where you put a key. I don't know what you call it. I don't know. <laughs> I wish I knew what that was called, because I find loads of little things like that. That gave a good signal. It wasn't very deep. Three inches, maybe. Interesting little find.
Now I know exactly what that is. Now this thing here, it's a fairly exciting find. In fact, it's, a, it's an outstanding find. It may look like a pheasant feeder, which would be full of corn, but it, this is actually the very rocket that took the first Scotsman into space. Here's another beautiful little bottle garden with tiny little ferns in it. I'm going to be careful to put this back in exactly the same place as I found it because these fellas are absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Lang Brothers Whiskey. Well, there you go. Hey, up, what's this? Badger. Dead badger. Yeah. These walls go all the way down here for maybe 50 yards or so seem to be built out of shale and shale is found either above or below coal or possibly sandwich in it I'm not entirely sure I know it's associated with coal anyway when you bring rocks up from way down in the earth they're under immense pressure and when you bring them out to the surface that pressure kind of gets released and they undergo something called and I may be wrong, but I seem to remember this from school, called unloading. They unload that pressure and they basically just fall apart over a period of time. That's what's happening here. So all of these stones would have come from way down in the mine. I can't find the mine. I presume the entrance has been dynamited or filled in somehow, but at least I found traces of this one. Nice big badger set here. Definitely badgers. See the footprints here? That's the pad. One, two, three, four toes. They're dirty devils. They're obviously breeding in there as well. That's nesting material. Very clean holes. By God, aye, look at that. Whoosh. It's like a runway. Looks like the pheasants have been taking a dust bath in here as well. Pheasant tracks. Yep, something's been taking a dust bath in here because of the pheasant tracks, most likely pheasants, although these little ones look like blackbird tracks or thrush tracks. My god, it's a deep set. It's a big one. still going on over here this whole of this land under here must be just one big set look at that what a hole that is more holes over here there's been a fox here as well marking its territory that's not badger crap that's off a fox What a massive set. Whoa. More bits of pheasant. You can see why people don't like badgers and foxes. So there's a massive badger set here, which stretches for, oh, 30 yards maybe, 30 meters by 20 odd meters. It's gigantic. But the smells that are around here aren't just from the badgers. I don't really want to pick this up, but I'm going to have to to show you it. This is a sort of fungus called a stink horn. And it absolutely reeks. Let you have a close look at it. There, and I don't need to tell you what that looks like because it's a pep pep pep, pep penis. Dear me, what on earth is that doing here? I'm absolutely miles away from anywhere. There's only small tracks through the wood and there's a full-size sofa. Unbelievable. Now I know for a fact that there's great crested newts in here because I've seen them before, a couple of years ago. I'll see if I can find one for you. There's a young one. 
know how well that's going to come out, but there's a young one there. There's another young one. And another one. Nah, just young ones. It's got to be adults though, so the time to see those would be on a night. Come here, shine the lamp on, I'm sure it'll be absolutely crawling with great crested newts. Oh, I don't believe it. It's an exceptionally rare glass viper. It's a dead one, luckily enough. But these fellas can't half give you a bite when they're alive. Just a small one, I'm just glad it's dead. My god, that was a dangerous snake. Well, there's not much to detect in here. But it's pretty cool. Looks like kids have been in and smashed everything to bits. I don't think there's any lights or even any light fittings left. Everything's been smashed up. Well, hey, I could do with a new pair of wellies and they look about my size. God damn. Everything's been smashed to bits. Rave pit entrance. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. <laughs> A dicky bird. Get in there. Oh dear me. I didn't see that before. Dear God. That's an example of English art at its best. Well, enough of this nonsense. Well, on to the next phase of my adventures. You'll notice on the Deus, I've got a cable going from the coil to the receiver. And the receiver is sitting in a box. Supposedly this is fully waterproof down to six meters. And this setup should allow you to detect underwater, which is exactly what I want for some of the river sites that I've got. Some of them are really promising. So I've bought this to try and make this detector waterproof. Now having this on as per instruction makes the machine chatter like hell but I, it might not chatter as much if it's under the water. I don't know. I think the coil's picking up the cable or something. I don't know. It's chattering. But I've tried it in shallow water and it seems to pick out the targets okay. That's in about two inches of water. So I've got a big tub. I'm gonna put drop a couple of, I don't know, I'll drop something in. I'll find something to drop in. I'll stick this in and try and find it in three or four feet of water. And then if I'm feeling confident enough, I'll put this whole lot under the water. I just hope it doesn't leak because these control boxes are hellish expensive. This aerial that joins the coil to just under the control box was from a company called Detechnics in the UK. I'll put their link in the video description. And this cover was, oh man, where did I get that from? I got that from eBay. Can't remember who it was from. It's actually for an iPhone, but it fits the Deus controller perfectly. Very little slack in there. And it's got a silicon front, so you can still get to all the buttons even underwater. 
I'm worrying about trying that, but yeah, I'll give it a go. There we are, switched it on, balanced it, put sounds on. It's chattering like hell again. I'm just give it a try on these bullets on the side of here. Well, bullet casings. Just picking that up okay. It's picking that one up not too bad as well. Now this is approximately a meter deep in here. So I'll chuck these casings in. One there. One in that side. Stick this lad under the water. Again, it's chattering like hell. Nothing yet. It's quite a small target, but I would like it to pick that up. Nah, it's just chattering away terribly. Hey, up, what's that? Yeah, we've got a, we've got a target there. Definitely one of them. Yeah, but I'm going to stick the whole lot under the water. Take a chance. It doesn't half muffle the sound when it's underwater, but if I'm underwater as well, I'm going to be able to easily hear that. I'll try it on a bigger target. I know there's a pump hanging over here. Yeah, it's finding that no problem. There's an electric cable there as well hanging in. Well, that seems to work. It definitely seems to work. And as far as I can tell, there's no water in there either. So I'm really looking forward to making underwater detecting videos with this. If it does work, I'll probably just go all in and buy a, you know, a proper underwater detector, but this will be a good test. And when I get back home tonight, I find something else. And I'm really excited about this. Now in here is a proper full-on dry suit. So this will keep me warm and totally dry. I haven't checked it yet, but it's brand new, so it should be spot on. And that's a Northern Diver dry suit. It cost me quite a bit, but I'm serious about getting into places that nobody else has detected. And as I say, I've got two, possibly three excellent sites. One of which is below a bridge from the 1500s, and you can imagine how many let me just turn that off. Shut up. Yes, one of which is below a bridge. And the bridge was built in the 1500s and there possibly was a crossing well before that, before the stone bridge got built. And you can imagine how many people would have flicked coins over for good luck in, in the hundreds of years that that bridge has been there. The riverbed is solid rock with cracks in. I've now hopefully got all the gear together to be able to exploit any finds that are lying in those cracks. And once something goes in those cracks, it doesn't matter how big the river gets, how, far, how fast and how hard it rages over those cracks, the stuff is going to stay in the cracks for centuries. And one of the rivers really does flood. It's, it's known for it. It goes absolutely berserk. It can rise by 5 or 10 feet in a day. But the possibly will still be stuff between those cracks. I've also got a underwater probe stroke pinpointer. I got this last year and I took it on holiday with me when I went to, where was it, Lanzarote or somewhere, somewhere warm, beachy. 
Uh, and I found a few things. I did video that, but unfortunately I had the GoPro set up totally wrong and the footage was absolutely awful. I've got more of an idea how to use the GoPro now, as you hopefully will see from this video that should have GoPro clips in it. So I'm going to use this underwater as well. Vibrotector 730. I got that from America. Thanks very much for watching. There will be more proper detecting videos coming in the very near future. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and click the like button. It's always appreciated. Now this next part of the video is a submission that I got from a fella called Stuart Hodgson. His channel link is in the video description, so please check it out. And in this video, he's going to show you and explain how to find sites which may hold Roman coins. And I could probably do with some of those tips because I have hardly found any Roman coins, even though I am um, probably about half a mile away from the site of a Roman fort and literally within spitting distance at the edge of my property is the main, well the remains of the main Roman road that went north to south. So I hardly find any Roman coins at all. I've managed one silver coin but there wasn't really many Roman settlements in my particular area or on my land that I hunt. Hopefully this video will allow you to do a little bit better than me when it comes to Roman coins. So thank you very much Stuart, that's much appreciated. Now this is just the first of what I hope will be many, many, many videos that people send me with their tips, reviews, basically anything relating to detecting. And if you want to advertise your channel in there, fair enough, no problem at all, stick a little advert in as well. But what I really want this project to do is to give viewers information and I think in my next video I've got one from Mark in the Netherlands and he'll be explaining all about the gear that he takes and how he transports it from his house to his site which is quite interesting and I would say almost unique. Good afternoon um, fellow subscribers and um, metal detectorists. Um, I've seen Pond Gurus wanting to do a um, worldwide uh, metal detecting tips um, compilation. So this is my entry for that. Um, I thought I'd aim it at um, specifically looking for Roman coins and artifacts, but um, more leaning towards looking for the silver coinage, the denarius. Um, I've only found about four or five over the years, and I'm sure people have found more, but. Um, I tried to look back um, through my finds to see if there was any parallels where, um, you know, if you like, there was uh, similar sort of conditions or, uh, you know, to where they were found that might help people on the look at search for, you know, coins and artifacts. So um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it will pan out, but uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, thank you. Um, over the years I've always been interested in um, place names um, stuff like that, and how that can help maybe pin down sites when I'm out uh, searching. Um, the, one of the books, I think I won this one as a prize years ago, it's been very good. You can still, you can still get it pretty cheaply. It's the English Dictionary of English Place Names and what it, what it does is it um, does it alphabetical A to Z of each place in the country and you can look up and then it will give you its origin whether it was in the Doomsday Book, um, where the name originates, whether it's Scandinavian or so, so that I found that very useful. Um, and the other one is um, uses of place names by Simon Taylor. I think he's at uh, Sheffield University, but he's done uh, a lot of research over the years as uh, to how the landscape around these places um, varies. You know, like um, so that is a useful book. And the only other one I have on the place names is the it's the Gallic one, which is for Scotland. Um, but that has a lot of things that are relevant. Um, you know, some some names um, like uh, Capel, um, places like that. Um, you get them. I think in uh, Wales, there's a lot of Capels and maybe Cumbria. Uh, relates to horses. 
uh, maybe when the way horses have been and stuff but um, as I say um, I'll show you and now I'll show you what coins I've found of honey there's only one coin um, I've got the four there that I, uh, I haven't got because it's um, a military lead June issue uh, 31 BC and it was that worn you can hardly see anything on it but uh, that was another Daenerys that I found so I'm just going to click it to macro now first silver Daenerys I ever found was actually that order there it's a bit over. was um, Julia Julia Domna um, what I like about Daenerys is the heads were stuck in such high relief that usually when you find them they look really good um, and then on closer magnification you can obviously see usually they suffered a bit of you know they've been in the ground all that time and churned down by the plough usually get a little bit of nibbling on the edges and that but usually the heads and you can see all the detail on that bust there you can see her hairline you can see that's better yeah. and as I say it's um, it's a god on the back he usually sat down and it'll say um, in Latin the motto on there to so that's from like 196 and most of them will be um, second century early third century but um, because that was obviously when they were more, more um, prolific in the in the in Britain, UK, if you like, Britannia. Um, second one is a nice denarius of Hadrian. Um, that's the only one that was on really really deep plow actually, um, but uh, that's quite good condition. There's just a little bit missing on the edge there. But, uh, and when you look at it under magnification, there's a Really, really hairline crack, which probably happened when it was actually struck, you know. But, uh, but it's just, as I say, I like them because the the, the portrait is so clear on them. Has it been, uh, and that's uh, about one, 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 seven to one, two, two, I think that one. And then the third one is another Julia Domna, which I thought was because it's so different from the first one. I thought it was Julia Mesa, but you can read Julia on there. And when I took it to the museum, um, they said it was duly done there again. Slightly different uh, cord on the back. Obviously, various different uh, kinds. And the last one is Antonius Pius. Um, I think he's uh, early third century, I think. Uh, uh, I mean that one's got a, a temple on the back and it tells you he's celebrating his how many years he'd uh, reigned I think I think that's why it's on the back there but yeah as I say specifically I would say your best bet is um, places ending well um, if you can get Thorpe's place ending in Thorpe it means uh, an outlying farm attached the village so it's usually a farm just in the outskirts of the village um, and you get um, you should if you hit the right field you should find some maybe some room in there but uh, um, and the other other one is the places ending by um, they have a good uh, place to start your hunts um, sometimes the fields can be quite away from the center of the village but uh, as I say, the will I've had uh, tend to be uh, be wise, tend to be near uh, old Roman roads or something like that. So the fields alongside them. I mean, a lot of people obviously can't go on schedule sites, so I don't, I don't think you can go in within. Uh, I think it's 15 meters, so like 50 foot. But uh, obviously, there's there's plenty of fields still usually around about to search, you know, and they will have been on there. People would have been on there, so. Just drop that one there. But, uh, yeah, and as I say, um, look for fields where there's been old footpaths, um, maybe slightly higher ground, you know, um, anything with a hill. If you get a hill with a path inside of it, maybe, uh, you know, give it a go because you'd be, uh, you just, just might be lucky and come across one of these little fellas.
but uh, as I say, I like I love finding them because they uh, seem to jump out at you. Uh, but, uh, anyway, as I say, if you have any luck, you have to uh, let me know. I don't expect much, probably going to be a 5% cut if you find anything, <laughs> probably said by the Alright, and uh, thanks for watching, thank you. So hope you've enjoyed that video. If you've got one, and if you've got a channel intro, just send them to me, just give me the link. Put it in a comment, in a message, to my email address. My email address is in the video description. It's pondguru at btinternet.com. However you want to get it to me, just get me a link. Send me the video file, whatever you want to do. I'll include it in an upcoming video and it'll help you to promote your channel and it'll help the viewer to gather a greater understanding of the detecting community and what goes on, how to make good finds, what gear to buy, so on and such forth. Thanks very much. So then, I had this bag on all afternoon, strapped under here. Thought it might actually get in the way, but it didn't. And it was fairly packed out with stuff. Very comfortable to wear. Holds more stuff than I put in it by a long way. So it's a very nice bag. This was from kingdigger.co.uk. The link is in the video description. He's got loads of different types of these. And in early August, I'll be doing a giveaway where I'll be giving three or four of these bags away in the same video. And on the subject of giveaways, I did start a giveaway video at the beginning of July this month and I said it would run for a month. That's far too long to run a competition or giveaway. In the future, I'll be running them for a week. So if you don't see the video in the first week, you'll miss your chance, unfortunately. But a month is far too long to let it go because most people will have forgotten about it by the time the result video comes out. Thanks very much for watching. Please read the whole video description because there's a bit more information in there. And there's also those links as well. See you next time. Now this next part of the video is um, when you bring them out into a... And... Now then, Blacksimus. How would you like it if I came to your house and started eating all your grass? Eh? How would you like that? Are you pitlin' everywhere? You dirty little devil. Absolutely beautiful. Today, I will be lamenting the fact that somebody has shot this can of beer. Now I have nothing to drink when I am metal detecting.